Well, slowly we will start traveling uh, in our journey with Francisco Carreri and Karen Rock tonight. Um, I'm uh, very um, happy to uh, introduce you tonight to Karen Rock and Francisco Carreri. Uh, Karen is an artist and uh, professor of digital arts at Jean Monnet University and saint Etienne in France. France. She's author of uh, Walking and Mapping, Artists as Cartographers, an iconic book for and about walking artists. Francesco Carreri is an architect and co-founder of Stalker, Observatorio Nomade. He is a professor at the Department of Architecture in Roma Tre, and author of another iconic walking arts book, uh, Walkscapes, Walking as an Aesthetic Practice. So tonight we walk with two giants. Before we listen to them, I would like to welcome as well Rico Tomassini, one of the initiators of the traveling artist project Som Carlos Balkans, co-producer of this Walk Lesson Cafe. Rico, I give the word to you. Hi everyone, um, I'm Enrico Tomassini um, and I'm part um, of uh, the Cultural Cooperation Project funded by Creative Europe, Simon Colas Balkans, uh, which we consider to be a transdisciplinary research and community that aims at mobilizing moments of collective production of knowledge and imagination. Um, we are a large uh, medium large uh, partnership project. Uh, we bring together a community center, um, cultural center, um, NGOs, uh, Biennale of Arts um, from um, all six different countries in the Balkan region and uh, from Italy and Germany as well. Um, tonight we have here with us some of uh, the artists uh, I'm at the moment in Banja Luka, uh, where SCAB, within its uh, three years uh, program, uh, is running a um, um, residency of one month, uh, together with a transit transdisciplinary group of artists, uh, ranging from film direction, uh, performance arts, um, also um, walking arts, um, and um, a more contemporary visual artist. And together, um, the artists with us uh, during these months uh, will um, co create, um, we co create what we call Balkan Mobile. Uh, the residency of one month in Banja Luka, uh, where I'm at the moment, Banja Luka is in the north uh, east. Uh, of Bosnia uh, in the Republika Srpska, and um, uh, and during this residency, the artist travelers uh, would be accompanied uh, by a set of international local experts, communities, uh, through workshops, site visits, team building activities, public events, in the co-creation of individual and collective artistic practices and actions as part of a traveling theatrical intervention, which we name. Bike Mobile. Bike Mobile, um, which uh, it's, we imagine it uh, as a public art participatory intervention and format uh, choreographed uh, during a journey of one month as an ensemble of actions, words, artistic practices developed during the residency that we're about to run. Um, the residency, per se, is, um, is in conceived as a dramaturgical intervention in the region of which the artists, the places people and communities met along the way are the protagonists. Um, and, um, and I'm very happy tonight to uh, be able to start our residency uh, online, then we'll be in um, person here in Banja Luka with all the artists uh, with this talk, uh, with two very uh, representative um, practitioners and uh, academics in the field of traveling and working arts. And, uh, and so I'm very happy to give the word to um, artist and professor Karen Orurke, uh, who will uh, give the first 15 minutes presentation that will be followed by Francesco 
Kareri, um, and um, and afterwards the floor will be open for questions and uh, discussion. So Karen, uh, welcome, and uh, I give you and um, pass you the word. You're mute, Karen. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I sent my PowerPoint uh, to Geert uh, and uh, Babak. I hope you can play it because I don't have my notes or anything with me, so I, I, I will need my I will need to play the the slide the slide. Uh... Please, Geert. Excuse me, did you understand? <laughs> yes, I was muted. I will share your uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, oh, that's not the beginning. There we are. Psychogeography. That's, that's the first slide I have. Um, I can, yeah. yeah, that's the first slide. This is the right one. Okay. Oh, dear. Psychogeography is the fact that you have an opinion about a space the moment you step into it. This has as much to do with the space as with our hardwired instincts to determine if it is safe, says Wilfried Haulebeck. Graphy comes from the Greek graphine to write, a decidedly polysemic word. If geographers carve, draw, or write the, the earth, what about psychogeographers? The Latin prefix psyche, breath, adds a zest of soul to the mix, linking earth, mind, and foot. Psychogeography for Wilfried is a way of reading the city. He called it the city space cut-up. Just as William Burroughs and Brian Gisson cut and reorganized newspaper text to reveal their implicit content, so two psychogeographers decode urban space by moving through it in unexpected ways. While the various practices gathered under the umbrella of psychogeography go way back, the term itself was first used by the members of the Lettres Internationale in the early 1950s. They described it as a science of relations and ambiences they were developing to give play in the society of others its true meaning a society founded upon play. This vague term was a good fit for their various activities. Later, Guy Debord developed an erudite explanations in articles like Theory of the Drift and Introduction to a Critique of Urban Geography. Since geography deals with the impact of natural forces, wrote on the un economic structures of a society, and thus on the corresponding conception that such a society can have of the world, then psychogeography should examine the specific effects of the geographical environment on the emotions and behavior of individuals. To accomplish this ambitious investigation, he and his friends practiced the drift. The adventure began during a transportation strike in the summer of 1953 on the platform at the Gare de Lyon in Paris, where the group was trying its hand at agitpop. Failing to rally any of the stranded passengers, De Boer and his friends left the station and began flagging down cars. Hitchhiking nonstop through Paris, their goal, he said, was to add to the confusion. Later, this technique of rapid passage through varied ambiences, was accomplished on foot or by taxi, 
depending on whether they wanted to study a terrain or to emotionally disorient themselves. Walking allowed them to focus on the environment at hand. They prided themselves on spotting the sudden change of ambience in a street within the space of a few meters. And the, uh, this is a map of the, uh, of the ambiences, uh, which uh, Dubois calls the Black Tournant. Uh, <clears throat> While the letterous drift was mainly an experience imagined by and for the drifters themselves, other artists produced events for onlookers to experience as well. In Amsterdam, Stanley Brown put sheets of paper on the sidewalk to collect the footprints of anonymous passers-by. Later, he began handing them paper, asking them to draw a map showing how to get from wherever they were to the train station or the cathedral. He gathered their drawings into an artist book. This way, Brown. In 1962, after observing street vendors illegally hawking genuine cheap Swiss watches, sous le manteau, under the table, literally under the coat, Robert Filiou decided to peddle artworks under the hat. He called it the legitimate gallery. He sent out an invitation to the opening in the form of an itinerary through Paris during which the gallery, its owner, and the exhibiting artist, who happened to be Bernard Patterson, ambled through Paris, talking with anyone who showed up at the various stops along the way, from the Porte Saint-Denis at 4 a.m. to La Coupole at 9.30 p.m. In 1967, after making a two-meter sphere of pressed newspapers, Michelangelo Pistoletto and his wife rolled the ball through the streets of Turin, inviting passers-by to play with it. This walking sculpture was a way of engaging with audiences outside the museums and galleries. The newspaper ball was one of Pistoletto's minus objects, in which he tested the notion of anti-evolution. He said anti-evolution was like walking forward on a moving sidewalk that is going backward. Latter-day letters and students of John Cage took up walking to explore the city through chance operations. One way of courting chance is to set up a situation in which one's course of action depends on decisions made by total strangers. Every day for 23 days in October 1969, Vito Aconci randomly chose a passerby and followed that person until he or she entered a private place that the artist could not legally enter without being invited. The pursuit could last a few minutes if the person got into a car, or a few hours if his prey carried on walking in public space. He related his actions in typewritten text, which he mailed to art world luminaries. Akonchi said that when he started following peace, he wanted to let someone else take over. Anytime you do, any, do something, you make decisions about time and space, he said. I wanted those decisions to be out of my hands. I could be dragged, carried along by another person. I could be a receiver. Other artists combined humor and activism. For the collective event, Nine Evenings in 1966, Ovin Falstrom arranged for performers to carry signs through New York streets showing portraits of Chinese leader Mao Zedong and U.S. television comedian Bob Hope. This odd couple of media figures was meant to produce a cognitive dissonance. What prescience. Today, comedians like Volodymyr Zelensky step into presidential shoes with ease. We can only imagine what path China might have taken with Bob Hope at its helm. When 
And Fred Forrest was invited to participate in the 1973 Sao Paulo Biennial. He defied Brazil's military censors by creating symbolic spaces for free expression. The high point of the operation was a street demonstration in which he and a group of marchers moved through the city centers carrying blank signs. The marchers weren't dissidents. Real protesters could have been arrested and tortured. But professional sandwich board men hired for the job, they couldn't be held responsible for the content of their signs. Passers-by understood immediately, though it was against the law for more than three people to gather in the street, after 15 minutes, recounts Forrest, 100 had joined the procession, and by the end, there were nearly 2,000 marchers milling around. The demonstration held up traffic for two hours, leading to the artist's arrest and to the event being abundantly reported in the media. In a lighter vein, Mona Hatun performed roadworks in May 1985 in the African Caribbean district of Brixton in South London. The site of violent riots in the 1980s, Brixton suffered from unemployment, inadequate housing, and a high crime rate. Yet for the population, more police presence was less than reassuring. The Bobbies had a reputation for brutality using their stop and search powers to target minorities. In Brixton, Hatum simply walked along barefoot, dragging behind her a tied by basis, a pair of sturdy military boots, <laughs> the kind worn by police officers and skinhead. Video footage shows the artist moving lab laboriously along a busy sidewalk, past chopping carts, baby carriages, market stalls. At first, we see just her feet pulling their charge as other pairs of shod feet uh, move quickly by without pausing. One oncoming pedestrian moves in and deftly turns one of the books, one of the boots on its side. Hatoum stoops to stand it back up. The camera gradually moves out to show passers-by turning to gate, pointing her out to their companions. A group of men look on, chuckling. One says, does she know she's being followed? This subtle play of vulnerability and power and underlying violence has a particular significance in Great Britain, where walking is a national pastime. Britain's most popular outdoor recreation brings into play embedded class antagonisms that pit aristocratic fox hunters against plebeian foot travelers. Suspicion of pedestrians actually harks back to 16th century Britain, where they were suspected of poaching. As common lands were being enclosed in the 17th century, the presence of pedestrians on public footpaths was seen as a threat to private property. Today, those pedestrians may be undocumented migrants or adepts of, of Nordic walking. At the time, Taiching Si carried out his third one-year performance in the streets of New York, the U.S., like Britain, was in the throes of a conservative revolution that cut back public infrastructures, ushering in a wave of homelessness. America's new heroes, Golden Boys of Wall Street proclaim that greed is good. Here, the Taiwanese artist, who happened to be an undocumented migrant, people didn't know it at the time, he voluntarily assumed the lifestyle of bag people, spending an entire year outdoors, moving around the city with a few belongings and a sleeping bag. He didn't allow himself shelter of any sort, not even a tent. The only exception to his self-imposed rule was when he was arrested and forced to spend the night in jail. These year-long drift was medical experiments, engaging the artist in his everyday existence as a human being, while offering the people he met the role of witness.
What is psychogeography's legacy today? In its diverse forms, it embodies the desire to renew language, social life, and oneself in the process. Walking for writer Ian Sinclair is a means of discovering hidden histories, bringing to light forgotten traces of past lives, uncanny correspondences that are disappearing under the wrecking ball in an increasingly gentrified city. In 20, uh, 2022, the New York that Aconci and C roam through is no more, replaced by a bright, Disney-fied version of itself. And in London, even Brixton has undergone what startupers call regeneration. Psychogeography has gone from being the academic bon mot it was for Hauyerek at the turn of the century to yet another support for high concept capitalism. One of the writers who contributed to its revival in the 1990s, Sinclair seems to have thrown in the towel. In his recent book, The Last London, he recounts how he set out one day to map secret places, riverside shacks, containers, empty packing cases, where urban explorer collectives have established their hides, only to discover that the crude charts it took him so long to draw with pen and paper already existed online in a more sophisticated form on YouTube and a dozen apps, streamed with ads for Santander bikes, my run techno gym, the intelligent home treadmill, and Walk London Mayfair Velvet studded loafers. But before we slump back down in our chairs and throw off our trainers in disgust, keep in mind that this has been Sinclair's angle from the start. There will always be untold stories that are just waiting to be found and no better method for happening on them than walking. Thank you. Thank you, thank you to you, uh, Karen. And um, as I said before, uh, we would go directly towards the presentation of Francesco. Uh, leave the floor to questions and um, observations uh, about uh, the different practices you have presented presented to us, and also the ones that Francesco will talk about. Thank you. Francesco, you can go. Francesco, you're muted. Okay, I start again. <laughs> it was, I just say thank you to um, Enrico and Gert to invite me and also to Karin for his uh, for her presentation because I discovered some project that I, I didn't know so thank you really and um, I, I was also saying that um, um, you asked me to, to to talk about the the first step uh, so the the early beginning of my practice and um, Okay, so I, I, I just want to do two steps, maybe three, if we have the time after. The first is the walk around Rome that you see here that I did with Stalker in 95, in the October 95, but that we prepare with some illegal gardens, um, appropriation squad of, uh, of the river banks, that we did in the early 90, uh, starting from the um, university occupation of La Pantera, that was uh, the first movement where we met all together. So this is the, the map uh, called Planisfero Roma, that uh, shows our path of five days, uh, the white line, of course. Um, 
and then there is a sort of planisfero, a sort of uh, image of the world uh, that uh, it, it is the map of Rome where we decided to paint uh, in uh, blue the sea of this archipelago and in yellow the islands, the continents. So this is a true map and this is a true walk and uh, we decide to in in a critic with against our teacher at the time at the university uh, we decide to move the point of view out of the um, urban and to put it in the um, this grand sitem <laughs> interstitial uh, space between the islands and to try to describe the the city from this moving point of view this it was this was really a nomadic point of view so the trip was uh, of four days and three nights and uh, oh sorry and this is one of the image that i love because it's clear the the, the contraposition between the waves of the sea, of the oceans, the, um, and the reality, the hard reality in stone and building of the city. So, and this is also a Pasolinian image that you can have uh, also today in Rome and in, in a lot of places. And so this is really the, the empty city and the full city. This was the name. Also, we say that they, they were the actual uh, territories for who want to know more or maybe then there are uh, this is the moment of, of question and answer um, and this is also another image taken from this first trip that is um, uh, uh, um, uh, I, trespassing of a frontier uh, because uh, we believe it at that time, but I believe it uh, also today, um, that if you want to know more about the reality of the city, if you don't want to accept to see just what uh, the system allowed to you to see, uh, you have to provocate the space um, and to force also the limit. So you have to go behind and see if something is hiding in, uh, there. Uh, so this is for me uh, an important moment. I, I always do that with the student or when I organize uh, walks. Uh, to me, uh, walking is not to walk just where you are allowed to walk, but me walking is uh, to force the space to really uh, to, to, to try to, to penetrate uh, and to be there where you are not supposed to be. So uh, I'm saying that we go inside the private property for the 80% of the works. And, and this is a, also a moment of the trip that it is uh, in the morning after the night and I think it is very important to slip out and to stay there and to yeah to pass to don't go back home after a walk and to try to be there more you can in, in a continuously uh, time um, and and this is also to to show you that uh, what we did in ninety five that opened uh, our mind because when we came back we were other people uh, this is really easy you can do that tomorrow uh, you, if you prefer tonight or so also now and close the screen and go and and sleep uh, out with your tent somewhere this is an experience really really simple to do if you have a group of friends uh, it's not important that they are artists, maybe, um, but to share this situation that is 
really, I, I think, um, an energetic in a way. The, the, to me, it has been an, uh, a sort of, ah, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> uh, when I came back Rome, my city was not the same. I mean, what uh, was not visible uh, at the beginning then became so visible, so so present to you that it is impossible to to do uh, to produce um, urban amnesty like the the the, the uh, actual city does. So. Uh, this is another moment of my research that is before uh, I, I wrote the, 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 um, the book Wallscapes, starting from these two approaches. One is Stalker, what I was doing with Stalker in the 90s, and then also my relationship with Sardinia and the beginning of architecture. So to me, uh, my question at the base of my book was, which is the relationship between architecture and working? And, and this is the moment in 96, where I was in Sardinia, um, going, um, to looking for Menhir, uh, this uh, standing stone. Um, Sardinia is full of uh, megalithics. <clears throat> and and it, this was a sort of passage. Uh, there was there, there is a line of Menhir in the valley, and then you follow the valley, and you have a door with two Menhirs, then a fifth Menhirs in the top. Uh, this is the, the the system of. So you have the line, then a door, one Menhir in the in the middle, and two other Menhir for the other door. So I, when I, I, I was doing this um, sketch, I, um, this is the image that I, I saw, uh, that there were, um, uh, Enrico, aiutami, un pastore, <laughs> a shepherd yes. with, with the sheep, and he was passing inside the two menhirs, inside the door to disappear after the, in, in the other valley. And this was the moment I understood that uh, it's not true that uh, nomadism is not related to architecture and the nomads are not interested to architecture, but that the architecture, the, the nomad, they did, they are the creators of the first architecture of the object. The Menhir. It is not all, only an architecture, it's also a sculpture because in the Menhir there is the column and there is also the sculpture. And, but, so uh, my, my question was uh, since how many times this uh, image is in this place? Uh, in the sense, who, who put the, the stones. Probably some people that um, millions, uh, thousands, thousands of years ago, they just followed the animals and the animals to don't dissipate energy. They pass it in, in this place because it's stupid to go to the hill. This is the best place to conserve energy. And and so this is probably a place uh, where the um, the animals uh, are the architect, the first architect, and then the humans following the animals. And but the 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 the, the, the birth of architecture for me is not related to the urban, to the town, but it is related to the landscape, to the open space, to the nomadic space. Um, Eric, I don't know. I I have. Just this is a to, to finish. If you want, um, those are the the pictures that uh, are related to walking uh, that are inside my book Volscapes. And this is the first walk, uh, the first trace of of a walk that is all, almost four thousand years ago. 
and the walkabout and the relationship between the ka, this symbol of the rising hemp, and the, um, and the object of the menhir. Mm, okay, this is a map that uh, show what I'm doing now uh, with my students. Now I'm a teacher of architecture in the University of Roma 3, and I, I have a pedestrian course. Uh, so for three months, we just walk around Rome. Um, the first walk with Stalker that I show was like here in around the center of the archipelago. And what I'm trying to explore with the students is more uh, around this um, raccordo annulare uh, that is as la, la, uh, orbital Rome in a way to, to Jan Sinclair book. <clears throat> so I, I use walking now to understand what's going on in the different parts, in the different geographies of Rome, uh, always in place that I don't know and that I go to understand and to explore with my students. Mm, yeah, this is a group of students under the Raccord Anulare, the iOS, and we produce uh, many maps. This is the map of the informal settlement that we found in the riverbeds. Uh, this was in 2007, and then this is an, another um, uh, course and walks that we did in 2009 around the Grande Raccord Anulare again. And this is the, the map of the um, resistant city. Uh, so it is, they are the squat. Um, well, when when I say squat, I, I mean uh, a building, an entire building that are squatted by by family of migrants, of people that don't want to stay in Rome forever, but just pass. And, and this is the, the the what I'm doing uh, nowadays. I'm, I'm working with, with with that. I think I, I I've stopped here, and then if there are um question i'm here did you hear me okay <laughs> yes we heard you um Gert. yes thank you francesca and uh, and karen for this introduction and being on the move uh, and uh, uh, your artistic uh, approaches towards that. Uh, and, um, as uh, this is a cafe, uh, you are uh, invited to, to talk and to um, uh, bring in your questions, remarks, ideas, uh, visions uh, on a very horizontal and open way. But maybe you have some questions. Probably you have uh, a lot of questions about what Karen and, and Francesco have presented to us. So if anybody feels like um, um, starting, um, please um, uh, just um, yeah, speak up. You need to unmute yourself and you can ask a question. Uh, I, could, maybe I can start. Yes, uh, sir. Hello, so thank you very much. Uh, I, I had a question maybe for both of you. I'm, I'm about the publics, like how do you share all this? How do you, maybe Karen, you presented different works of people. So to what extent these people found ways to share this experience with the publics, with everyone? And Frances Francesco the same way, like did, did, you, did you share by some ways your experiences with people all around, or did you plan performances with people here? I, I don't know, I'm asking about like relations with publics, basically. Karen, it's you first or me?
Karen, are you there? <laughs> okay, uh, or else I can start. Um, well, I, I did a lot of different things in in the last thirty years, so I, I share in a way uh, my approach. But of course, I share um, in the sense I I don't like to be alone. Uh, I don't like to be a group also. And to me, the, the moment of the meeting with the others is a, it is really important. But to me, this is not a spectacle. Uh, there is not a public in a way. Um, all the people that work with me, it is because they, they want to work, not they don't want to see a work. Or, um, and so when we cross, when we transpass, uh, when we just pass uh, in in strange places, maybe there is somebody that look at the window and see us. And for me, this is very important that something happened unusual in his life. So there are some uh, a, uh, Observatory observers um, by chance. I don't know what to say. Not not uh, unexpected observer. This is my best public. And then what I try also now to do the more and more is to be in contact to to have a contact with the people we meet and to start a conversation to be. Try to be hosted by by them. To also, there I think it's important to penetrate, in a way, uh, the, the 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 space also inside the houses and ask for a coffee, stay there. So to be more in touch with the people, and and this is also uh, it's it's not something. Spectacular, isn't it? It is something really usual, human. Uh, I mean, and then my way to share I, I do many workshops, or um, I do work for um, all the people that ask me to do a work. Uh, there are activists, uh, photographers, uh, or um, artists, uh, it doesn't mind, but I, I, I do a lot of different work and always I, I share the experience. I think what we produce as Stalker is more experience than uh, object of art. Uh, it's more related to theater, if you want, to theater without public, in a way, or performance. But I don't like much this uh, work that today is consumed. I don't know if Karen is there. Karen is here. Um, I see that her network is not so good. Karen, can you unmute yourself? And do you want to add something to what Francisco said? In the meantime, we wait for uh, Karen. Feel free as well to put your questions um, and uh, comments. Uh, into the chat. Um, I, um, we, um, if you prefer not to speak up, uh, just write your question or comment, and uh, we'll go through them um, as well. Um, Hi, I have, um, I have uh, a question. If that's okay. Of course, Mary. Please go on. <laughs> um, the I was wondering if the if yourself and the people who accompany you, students or non-students, how they uh, do? Do they record the walks in any way, in terms of drawing, or recording sound, or um, or re or take making notes of the sensory experience? I'm very interested in the the kind of sensory experience of of the environment and architecture, and. And so that's kind of fascinating for me at the moment. Sound is is my kind of sound and drawing is is 
the things I concentrate on if I'm exploring. Mm, yes, I, I, it, it's, I go or Karin is also, okay, I, I go. I, okay, thank you. Yes. yes um, well, during the walk, many people do different things. I'm less less interested by the product of the walk, in the sense. Uh, in the last walks, I, I don't take a lot of pictures. I don't do videos. I am concentrated on the walk, on the act of walking, more than to be preoccupied and hurry from what I have to do as an artist. Uh, uh, so, but anyway, I, I live, uh, everybody is free of doing whatever, it's not a problem for me if they produce a art object after the walk or during the walk. But in my practice, this is a really, it is now completely pre disappear. Um, not not always, but um, about sound, uh, I, I did a, a lot of work with uh, choreographer more than sound artist. I mean, that are uh, interested uh, on, on working uh, with with blind eyes, for example. So in the perception of the movement of the body, and and I do a lot of experiment in that sense in my work during my work. Sometimes I ask to close the the eyes and just listen or touch. Or but uh, I, I think yes that sound uh, the, the, the tonal space. I don't know how to call it. It is really important to to perceive and to understand um, the urban environment of course but this is a and and then you can also sometimes also some uh, people that record sounds then they do a sort of um, collage uh, or uh, i don't know how to, <laughs> to mix uh, and etc to and I, I really like it. This is a way to don't produce object, and and so to do a sort of immaterial architecture to me. And this is important also that the people understand that there are many immaterial ways to to produce art. Yes, I mean it's kind of more um, for drawing, walking, and drawing means that. For me, I take a moment or several moments to really stop and look in detail. And then everything else kind of forms around it, with, or whether it's really stopping and listening to the sound and recording it. Um, I don't do much with it, but it's, yeah, so it's, it's a kind of, uh, it's, I suppose, a tool for really focusing. And then at some point, you know, I think maybe I'll, Bring them together if if it's if it's kind of uh, creates another perspective of the actual place rather than a facsimile. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Mary. Um, I have a question for no. Clara Garib. Francesco. Uh, I wanted to know if uh, how important is for you the time, the long, the length of the project, the length of the walk, because uh, in my experience, walks that last more than two or three days uh, change completely the rhythm and completely the mind, and uh, also the relationship between the members that are sharing that walk. And I wanted to to know if you experienced something similar, because in the works we organize. Uh, I agree, Clara. Uh, 
uh, with you. This is what I was trying to say with the, the first experience of Parker, the trip of four days, the fact that you don't go back to take a shower to have a night <laughs> uh, in your bed uh, at the end this changes completely your experience and of course also the relationship of the group this build the group and of course i i always about time in general i when i start now the the work that i organize i ask to don't have meeting after so to feel free and to be open that maybe this night we will not go back home so to 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 be open and not to to have one hour for work or two hours or five i mean when you start a walk uh, also if you know that after you have a conference uh, in the theater or whatever but the idea is that uh, here start an experience and that experience go ahead and you don't know when it finish. This is Im really important to me that um, and also to don't uh, look at the um, clock or the telephone. Uh, yeah, to me, it, it, but I don't know, um, Enrico, help me in English. La durata. The land. Ah, okay. <laughs> land like, of the book. Yeah. Yeah, okay. this is really important. Yeah. Uh, I think the, you can't work for one hour. This is a. Uh, sometimes people uh, organize, no, they say, ah, okay, so from three to five we do a drive with Francesco Carreri, and then we have, and I say, no, no, this is impossible. I can't say that we go in a drive for two hours. Yeah. yeah. yeah but I, my experience also. I understand. Uh, I also had a question for Francesco. If uh, somebody else doesn't want to, okay. Please call me. Great. Hi, Francesco. Thanks so much for sharing what you've been doing. And hi, Mary. I have. Hi. I had some questions uh, like regarding methodology because we are now building like how we're going to develop these walks and everything you've said um, we've already you know like tried to to think how we divide the time between like being on your own being able to reflect being part of the group also going into people's houses but how you're going to gain this trust and how you're going to you're going to build this over time etc but what I want to ask you is like have you already based like your research questions and you have created the parameters before going out so for example you were saying i have these squats that i have noted them down already and i will move in a radius of like i don't know two kilometers from the city center of rome let's say for example and that's going to be my limitation because you have a project that develops as it goes like you move and every day you discover new things so there's a lot of ways you can get to so like how do you you know, like put boundaries, how do you know like which thing you're going to follow, like what narrative, how you're going to research it, how do you make sure that like you filter the information that you get in and you stick with your goal? Uh, well, um, it's, uh, <laughs> you're uh, asking, uh, is my methodology in a way? And, I always uh, answer that I have no methodology in because I do everything you say I do. Uh, uh, the sense that sometimes I have the time to study a map before. Uh, I go to Google Map a lot. I love Google Map uh, because you find a lot of information there. And before start working in a new context in a new city uh, I always do on Google I, I try to see where are the Roma people the gypsies the Romani Chal uh, the Gitanos because those places are always really interesting to see because they are in, in the dump 
or in the glutted zone. So once I understand where they are, I try to see what uh, if there is something around also interesting. So I try to start from the problem in a way from <clears throat> then sometimes uh, the, the the project is really completely indeterminate. So maybe I have not the time to prepare the work, but I start the work from the from where the, the, the somebody has said that we have to start, and then I, I, I stumble, and I I have um, a knowledge now of how to stumble in in interesting places. Um, it is the, 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 the two things, and maybe once I've stumbled in an interesting uh, space with um, interesting people, I decide to stay there for a while, uh, for days, and then start a, re a research or start another project, and also maybe an architectural project. So uh, it is a way of sailing. Uh, I, I go where the wind is high. Uh, and to take the wind and this is a sort and methodology uh, comes from Greek meta odos so it's not something that we do before the, the the project the traveling but it's something that we we do while we are traveling meta odos durante el camino and during the whole medio del camino Thanks. Thanks for the Greek reference. I like the Greek stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Thank you, Maria and uh, Francesco. Unfortunately, we have lost Carmen, um, uh, the derive of uh, the internet connection. Uh, now, uh, maybe she will join us uh, back. If not, maybe we have the opportunity in another, another cafe to uh, ask her more questions. Um, but for the moment, uh, Francesco, you need to speak with multiple voices. Uh, so, uh, is there anybody else that uh, has an, want to share something about your practice as uh, traveling as art, as walking on the durational, um, um, durational way? Uh, I would like to ask something, Francesco. Yes? Um, I would like to explore or ask you a bit. Uh, about the notion of hospitality. Um, I also know you have been working on it uh, in relation to my migratory uh, groups. Um, and uh, was, I was wondering how you uh, see during a walk or a journey, uh, how do you see also the process of hosting when you're a group of persons? So does it happen that uh, or do you conceive the community of people you're, uh, you know, traveling with and drifting with um, also as, as possible uh, host uh, for a community you meet on the way? Or how do you see hospitality somehow in this journey? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Enrico. Well, you know, uh, we're working about hospitality since five, six years, and we started uh, on the path of Enea, uh, so <laughs> but I have to explain Virgilio, Eneide, the book uh, of um, the Gens, Julia, the Imperator, uh, Augusto, but I don't want to go there. Uh, <laughs> but this is just to explain that um, searching uh, on the um, uh, the, the, the foundational mites, miti fondativi, come si dice? Uh, help me with my horrible English. The myth of, uh, yeah, the, the, um, the mythological foundation of... Yeah, the mythological foundation of Rome, uh, that everybody knows the story of Romolo and Remo, the twins, but the brothers, and but... Uh, in, in in fact, this is uh, the, the the first moment is 
when Enea met uh, Enea that his refugees escaped from Troia in uh, the barn in Troia of Isaiah, uh, he arrived in, in the beach of the of Rome, um, the Mediterranean, after a long trip where he lose many companies. So he is a, a modern refugee, uh, like people coming from Libya, from Turkey. It is the same story that it is always the same since thousand years, and and he met a Greek that is his enemy because he is like a uh, Ulysses. So and he met in the Palatino that is the hill of Rome that was full of ruins. So you have this uh, Shen with two strangers in a place of ruins. And in, it is this meeting of two strangers, a Greek and a Trojan, and with the other uh, autochthons, that gives the birth, the, the true birth of Rome. And, and the Greek and the Trojans are uh, related by hospitality, by xenia, that is the gift of hospitality. It is something that they have in common because in their families, uh, there were this gift um that they share so what is hospitality i think we are doing a, a research um for and, and I, I i wrote a book um that the name is circo uh, an imaginary of uh, uh, an hospitality an hospital city i don't know how to translate it because in in all the culture, the nomad, the the the, the people who, who travel, they have to knock at the door of somebody. They, they have to. There is a moment of the trip that you need help, and uh, the fact that you knock at the uh, at the door is sacred in all the culture, not only in. Christian uh, in the Bible uh, or in uh, the Odyssey, but also in um, in, in a lot of uh, culture of the world, who knock at at your door could be a god, could be an angel. So if you don't open the yeah. the yeah. door, you will be punished. Uh, and this is something that. Oh, I replied. Our culture today has completely forgot. Yeah, I think I think they're beautiful. My my favourite is the blue. I think it's so. Hello. It's got all the Mary. intensity and the passion, but it's got a kind of um, you uh, glow to it. Really lovely, without Mary. layers. You know, kind of layers of meaning that you might not intend. I mean, they're all beautiful, basically. But the blue one just kind of really went, oh, lovely. It's really beautiful. Uh, and we go. Well done. <laughs> what, what the master of the, uh, yeah. maybe Baba Gregoric and uh, No, Marie. I really like it. It's stunning and it's. This yeah. is part of the review of tonight. So we have. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I don't know. This was hospitality. <laughs> it was somebody looking at the door, literally. I see that um, Karen has joined us again. In the realization. And... Karen, are you there right now? Yes. You have the chance. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. It, it's a very difficult connection. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Um, anyway, we can hear you loud and clearly, Karen. Is there uh, anything you would like to add to what is said? Is there anybody who would like to ask a direct question to Karen? Um, well, it was very interesting, the, the hospitality <laughs> effect. Um, uh, it, it's it's hard to say for, I, I would go back to, because I missed a lot of the discussion in between time. So it was the question of the public, and I think there were projects that I was talking about that were that were made mainly for the experience, for the people who carried out the experience, and some of them were in the in the realm of the art world where they were trying to uh, 
involve other people later with documentation, etc. Uh, I'm thinking of Vito Iconci, for example, who was carefully uh, documenting everything he did. And what we know now is the documentation for many of many of these uh, many of these walks. Um, Fred Forrest also was. Um, I was comparing his work to uh, like a. Um, some of these anonymous events, and he was saying, but no, but it's not, it's, it's interesting to create an event, but, but he was also very important, it was very important, the publicity for the event, the fact that he was working with the media. <laughs> uh, so it, it's, it's quite different from a C, uh, Fred Forrest and, and uh, Te Ching C are, are just about uh, polar opposites when it comes to the, <laughs> Public, although today C uh, exhi exhi exhibits his documentation in museums, and he has a beautiful coffee table book uh, about his 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 years uh, doing these different um, one year projects. So uh, most of, most of the ones I in that particular part of my book, in other parts of my book, I talk about people who, who were carrying on uh, experiments for, uh, more for the experience of the walk itself. But there, it, being being artists, many of the artists somehow it, it goes in, you know, if they, if they experienced as a writer and then afterward they wrote about it, you know, it, it comes out in other other media, but it's not, it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to. But the so, but the public now, I guess I'm I'm part of the public because I'm showing uh, <laughs> I'm showing pictures that that I, I of these of these works, you know, and and uh, a sort of after the fact public, you know. But. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, um, talking about uh, your work and your book, which was focusing on uh, walking artists um, and um, how artists translate this movement uh, practice and artworks. Um, Enrico, uh, maybe one of the eight artists or some of the artists want to um, talk a bit about what they intend to do um, and get some feedback. Uh, I don't know, uh, I cannot uh, say for them, but um, uh, I mean, if they want, they can say. Uh, Mary, uh, who talked before, she's one of the artists and she's actually currently working on um, a practice uh, of walking and she's exploring um, how to actually develop it. Uh, and the idea is that these practices that we are working on would be uh, different ones, and they would be somehow um, composing and characterizing our approach uh, to one month's journey. Uh, so our situation is a bit different in a way that uh, let's say our journey would be a journey that would be not only made by walking, uh, would be a journey characterized by any different stops uh, across uh, with all the willingness, also the willingness to um, connect and discover and somehow uh, go to the uh, hurt of uh, also the misconceptions or false myths that populate uh, the lands. Uh, we're exploring uh, that is the land of the Balkans, but there are many aspects coming together also because the interests of the artists are many and, many and different among each other. And we still we are still in the process also of understanding what uh, each one of us uh, wants to explore in this sense. Uh, what I would be curious to ask uh, Karen, as she didn't have much of a floor before, um would be how uh because for example the, the experience of stalker uh is very much based on an idea of uh the reeve and drifting and letting ourselves to to be within the walk 
uh, often without the intention of recording anything, um, if not uh, on the basis of the will of the people participating. Um, and I was wondering, for example, in the case of uh, Michelangelo Pistoletto, uh, with uh, the ball, like the paper um, ball that is rolling into the street, uh, do you know how he uh, thought um, of it also as a, maybe uh, as a tool to investigate uh, is uh, this uh, dimension of uh, looking for interaction uh, with the people also the dimension of uh, investigation, uh, Karen? Um, I'm not sure I quite understood the question, but... Um... Uh, he was interested in, I, I, I think um, it's not a major element of his work, um, this particular uh, this particular walking project, but um, his, his, uh, his goal in doing this was to talk with people and to, uh, and to, it was a, 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 but it was recorded. It was not, it's not like, um, it, it, there was a film made of it, uh, of the walk through the city, and so it was. It was one of these uh, smaller events, uh, because there have been m many, many artists who've done one or two works in which they uh, used walking uh, as a tool, but they were. It was not their major tool. You know, some people uh, like the the group Stalker and and Francesco uh, use it. Uh, enor enormously, and it's it's a very important part of their work. And other artists have have um, have experimented with walking, but have not necessarily uh, uh, pushed it to you know. It's they they just use it in one particular project. Hello. I don't know if you hear uh, me. Yes, and, and just just to to to, to say something, Enrico. Uh, well, I, I I was not saying that in the stalker works don't record and we don't face it. This is what I am going to do more and more today. But for example, the archive of the first work that I show uh, in Rome in '95 uh, now is in in the um, FNAC, uh, Fond, National Fund of Contemporary Art of French. So we have all the archive uh, with the text, is the, um, the the pictures, the video, and the, um, we, we recorded everything. <laughs> there, uh, mm -hmm. there is a big archive about that. Uh, then what I was saying that it is now nowadays I'm not so interested to do that. But this is another. Yeah, but I just uh, apart. Uh, thank you. Uh, also, Lori Laco wanted to say something. She's one of our artists. But I would just say a comment on what you said. Um, just because I know, uh, I mean, I know both of your books. I mean, both Karen and Francesco. And I know in your book you are referring to Richard Smithson, who. Um, somehow was the first artist who really um, thought of walking as an art medium per se, um, which I think is a shift in the conception, right? Uh, in, of course, you can document and so on, but then there is this part that is so essential uh, to, to the very act of what you do. Um, for me, it's always been fascinating to think of uh, the concept that he used of uh, uh, while walking to actuate uh, territory somehow, uh, to okay. make territory. But I would give the word to Lori that it was about to, to say something, if she's still there. Yeah, I'm here. Unfortunately, I couldn't um, uh, open my video, but probably the connection is better like this. So. It's okay in the end. I saw some people losing it. So um, thank you very much, Karen and Francesco, for this uh, for this very insightful talk. Um, yeah, I was thinking when when Karen was speaking also about Sophie Kyle with uh, 
with her performance in 1980, Sweet Venetian. My, my French pronunciation is very bad every time I try to pronounce something. And uh, it's so very interesting the fact that um, uh, Sophie Kahl and Luca uh, <coughs> Conti were also trying to somehow. <coughs> so when you walk, as Francesco was saying, you are also trying to enter somehow, not intentionally, but you do enter in in relation with with also the people, not only the space. And then maybe it's more of a curiosity than a question, but I really liked the the terminology that Francesco was using about the fact that you have to provoke the space to force the limit and to walk where you are not supposed to walk. So maybe my curiosity regarding to walk when you are not supposed to walk uh, was like, do you have, like, how, how does it, I mean, maybe sometimes you're lucky and you can walk where you're not supposed to walk and nothing happens, but other times maybe it's more complicated. How do you deal with somehow this kind of, uh, let's say walking in, pro, in, in forbidden places or prohibited? Well, I'm, I'm, of course I'm lucky because um, I, I never had big problems. Yeah, sometimes the owners arrive and say, what are you doing here? I have some strategies like to say we are an international seminar of walking poets. So, <laughs> <laughs> they think you are stupid or, or they are happy that uh, it's the first time that they meet a poet. So, uh, uh, you, you deal in a way um, this fact and, and never, um, nobody has uh, called the police or something like that when they discover you are inside. They just ask you to go out. And sometimes they also understand your practice. Um, I don't know. There is a, a sound. You, you heard it? Uh, if you can, please, uh, everybody, to uh, switch off your mic. Leave it open. Give everybody. A okay. But any, anyway, yeah. I think it's important also to to teach that to the students. The fact that you are more free than what you think. Uh, also, it's the only way to, to stumble somewhere completely unexpected. Okay. Maybe she can turn on. Please, uh, everybody, could you check if your sound is off? Yeah, uh, there were many artists who've, who've taken uh, a rather arbitrary rules, made their rules instead of the rules of, uh, uh, as, as he, C was doing and found himself arrested at one point. But it's, it's if they're walking a straight line, for example, and, and find themselves. I, I was part of a project where we were going into people's backyards and, and uh, Right. And it, it turned out to be more interesting than anything else for us. We were, I guess, lucky too. But um, it, it engaged other people in, in an un unusual way. Yeah, I think you really need some courage somehow. Um, and yeah, it was helpful to also think that you can use some strategies to to convince people that what you're doing is uh, is important, and then for sure, I mean, to be lucky. Like always in life, you have to be lucky somehow. Yes, we are also white. Um, and yes. <laughs> that uh, give you a sort of passport to be there because I. I and now I am looking that, uh, yes, if you have in the messages in the chat that uh, if you are a girl uh, is uh, more complicated, of course, but I, I, I'm talking about something that you do as a group. So normally our mixed group, uh, of course, 
I, I, I don't go to, to trespass alone. I never did it. Uh, or rats I do, but it is because I, I, I really need it. But, but of course, it, it is not the same. Okay, thank you very much. I see that uh, Darin uh, now raised her hand, at least virtually. Darin, would you like to... Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can. Hello, uh, I am Darin, I am from Sarajevo. So, uh, hello uh, to the team in Banja Luka. <laughs> I, am, I am an architect. Uh, I am originally Lebanese, but I'm in Sarajevo since a year and a half. And I'm doing like an independent research uh, based on walking. What I'm doing is that uh, I am doing the walks that teachers were doing in Sarajevo during the war, because during the war and the siege, uh, the schooling continued. And uh, the schools uh, like uh, put in place a system where the children were going to small rooms to study called punts. And there were local communities and the professors were uh, sometimes walking each day like around 10 kilometers to go to the classes. And the children too were risking their lives in a besieged city with snipers. So this is a story based on a book I read it was an American professor that researched all that, but the book is very spatial. <laughs> so I started mapping all these places in the city and I contacted the teachers again, like they were teaching 30 years ago, so now they are a bit old. And I'm doing the walks again to, to rewalk the same route in a city that has changed. But even for them, it's difficult sometimes to recognize where they were giving the class. And so it's like a kind of uh, um, bringing these places back back to memory because some teachers also uh, passed away and the whole story passed away with them. Uh, and, and the question is a bit uh, like um, this walk has to do with memory, but I don't want also to, to exploit this war memory, you know, to, 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 because it's, it's, it's very much, I don't know what the the team in Banja Luka thinks, but I think the war is, theme is very exploited now after, after the war in, 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 in Bosnia. At the same time, I don't know how, how to, um, to reach people and make this walk interesting for them, probably. So I'm mostly on my own. And um, I, I cannot find how when you have an interesting project and work, how to reach, how to make it more participative, how to make it more collabor collaborative, and, and convince the people of what you are doing in, in a way. Well, Darin, uh, thank you very much. Um, and, um, and if you are passing by Banja Luka, you're welcome to visit us. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's a pleasure yes. discovering you also. <laughs> if you follow our program, we have several activities open to the public. We are trying throughout the residency to okay. have not just exhibitions, but also some walls uh, with uh, people um, like as participatory as, as possible. Uh, we are one Diona, one of our artists, together with uh, a guest of the residency, they are trying to walk, uh, to work on a walk, um, a performative walk throughout, uh, like following uh, also conflicted memories. Uh, so this terrain of memories uh, that are attached also, uh, of course, to the history uh, of uh, Banja Luka, but more generally of uh, all. Uh, of old Bosnia, and um, and so of course uh, I don't know within the project. Of course, the war has been always something that we are don't want focus on because we want to work more on trying to find traces of beauty uh, also in what we find now. For now, it's been like this. Also, try out our research, uh, but of course we don't ignore, but we rather. 
uh, try to um, uh, work on this conflicted memory also as a potential for uh, a possible uh, reimagination uh, of the future. So um, how uh, something that has been also a trauma can uh, become actually the base also to imagine uh, teens that uh, uh, somehow are not there, but that together uh, through exercises and practices that artists and uh, our guests during the residency are developing at the moment, we are trying to uh, somehow uh, draw, also go beyond that uh, narrative bit. Even though, of course, and uh, it's very important also to, of course, take into account the history and the memory, uh, but we uh, are somehow for interacting with the present, uh, knowing the past, but also trying to imagine through our arts also in the trying to be participatory uh, as a space also for imagining a future. Um, and uh, I, I saw that one of our artists, Cesar uh, Sali, uh, has raised his hand, so maybe I would give the word to him, uh, Cesar. Thank you, uh, Enrico. We, we will be in touch, for sure. <laughs> Please write us. Uh, you can write us if you want in touch. Thank you. Hello to everyone. Greetings. Um, I wanted to 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 say for the uh, for the previous uh, participant that she said about the Bosnian War. Uh, I think there is the same thing with uh, with the Kosovo War because I saw a wonderful documentary film a uh, previous year about the uh, about the uh, 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 the school which was uh, also like outdoor school for the Kosovo students in the war of, of, of Kosovo. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a mutual, I, I mean, it was happening in that time in different uh, countries. Uh, so uh, I wanted to say that uh, this is my, my first uh, meeting with the walking. Um, I mean, there is like a, a various uh, writers and, you know, thinkers about this. I'm a filmmaker, so, uh, basically, I, I know that practice, and uh, and also I have that uh, particular education. But uh, with uh, with with knowing about uh, about this topic uh, in my street, in my hood, where I'm living in 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 Skopje, in North Macedonia, uh, for now, um, I met a one a neighbor who he was uh, in a soldier duty in Banja Luka in '82. And uh, he was uh, mentioning and uh, uh, about the, the time uh, in that time how it was when uh, when he was young and when he was uh, he was a soldier. So he mentioned a couple of places, which I think uh, I saw it also uh, as as as, uh, uh, as Francesco said uh, in the Google map, and uh, I saw that uh, you know uh, the the street names got changed. From that time, so I th so he he mentioned a one street uh, called Yajka, which is changed. I think uh, that was a street name. Uh, I think it was near to bus station in Banja Luka, and uh, but now I think it's changed. And also he mentioned that he met a people, which uh, I have uh, also a, 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 I I took a photos of of that picture. Uh, so it can be maybe interesting to to see if they if that people are still alive and what kind of uh, connection uh, they have with this uh, with this uh, uh, human being from that time are the locations uh, the same or they are changed uh, and uh, also the the profile picture of his soldier uh, of of uh, a picture is taken in Banja Luka so maybe we can find a photographer who. who I mean, basically, metaphorically, he has a he has a meaning of uh, of uh, catching memories as the film uh, is is doing. So, uh, basically, my question is this: How to develop uh, 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 this idea by presence walking, like Enrico said, that 
of course that I'm I'm interested on now how how uh, 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 we are experiencing that working now in Banja Luka, but uh, how it can be um, used also the past and the memories, uh, and uh, uh, how we can archive that. Uh, what can be the the different uh, the different uh, tactics or strategies or whatever it is. Is it to who you are asking this question? To Francesco or to Karen or to both? No, I, I'm asking to everyone. Okay. Karen. Karen, are you talking? Because maybe there is not the. I, I see that the light around your rectangle uh, was lighting, but we don't hear you. Uh, no, I wasn't saying anything. Ah, okay. No, because it's a hard question. Uh, about memories, how to collect memories, how to archive memories, how to rework memories with people. Uh, there is not an answer. Uh, there are many, many ways. Um, I, I, I did a lot of projects in, in this that sense. I think what is important is to to try to share the experience, the, the, the memories and the experience in a participatory, participatory uh, project moment uh, in a relational way is not so important to bring there uh, in, in this work uh, artists, curators. Uh, uh, it is more important to arrive to bring there uh, the, the sons of the scholars that uh, went to the school or the families or in, in Kosovo or in Sarajevo. I mean, um, how to start a public project uh, about that in a lot of ways uh, with your friends first. And then you, we, we, I don't know in English, uh, please, Enrico, passa parola. You <laughs> translate. Uh, uh, word of, like mouth to mouth uh, speech. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. exactly. I, I think uh, those things are so interesting that I, I think it is too important to. To, to archive the memory of that. So the, you can do a audio walk uh, <laughs> or just uh, record audio of the, the these uh, storytellings, and it doesn't matter. It is important that you you do that in in Sarajevo and Kosovo. Uh, I, I have no. And then about memory, we can talk uh, all night long, but. It's better not. <laughs> yes, thank you, Francesco. <laughs> it's a good idea of recording, especially because uh, when it's explained by 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 the person, it, it's very difficult to to write this again in the same, like the same mm -hmm. moment and the same words used and this is spontaneity, spontaneity of the moment so yeah record i haven't thought about recording when we were walking and uh, the professor or the student was speaking but uh, yeah this is a good way <laughs> thank yeah, you yeah and you can also map and and put the sound uh, in in the schools uh, and the, I don't know. Uh, you can you can use you can use a, a, a lot of tools to do that. But the yeah. important is you do that. Yes. Then you will archive in a way. Okay. Thank you. 
For me, um, it comes to my mind also another aspect because now also within the project, like we also um, like consulting um, uh, some local archives. Um, we still like there are many different topics we might find uh, that interesting to us. Uh, but basically, archives to have you know uh, mainly visual materials. I don't know if they have also audios or so, but uh, and the videos. Um, and I don't know how we're gonna use them, uh, like how uh, the artists then will use them. But for me, it's interesting how what we might find here. Uh, for example, even a single picture can be. Uh, a base, um, for example, to activate um, uh, a story, a possible story that maybe uh, that picture can be, you know, presented to a stranger or to someone to whom we ask a question, and that picture can be the start uh, of a collection of pictures. I, ju I just um, uh, going with my head, but uh, I'm fascinated by this aspect of uh, also. Uh, also, because of my personal artistic practice, uh, I'm fascinated by the aspect of um, having some sort of also material tool uh, to initiate a conversation um, and to uh, and then delve uh, into uh, into like discovering things I would not know um, and uh, I would not be able to even to imagine. And uh, uh, and for me, it's always very important also uh, I often like to to think of uh, a question uh, or something like a, some like a, a key aspect I'm interested in um, on that phase that can be uh, maybe uh, that I see a bit as a, a dramaturgical uh, tool to start initiate uh, uh, many possible stories now. Oh. Yeah, I had this in mind. I wanted to share, and uh, yeah. Can I have a? Can I ask a one question, to to everyone who who wants to answer it? How how uh, it's written the the walking dramaturgy? Because I know in film how how does it, but in the walking. Mm, I, I didn't understand. Sorry. I'm saying the the dramaturgy of the story uh, on uh, when 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 uh, we are doing the walking uh, practice, how it is written as a story. I mean, is is the basically as as the as the classical dramaturgy the the techniques how it's written or it's just uh, it's spontaneous how the how the walking is going on. No, which walking are, are you talking about? Because there are many possibilities. No, not just one. I mean, you can go with a map, with a text, or with yes, uh, earphone, okay. or um, and somebody is talking to you and I don't know there are so many different ways uh, maybe you are not writing you're just recording the story and it's not possible to to, to answer to you Caesar okay. <laughs> you have to do it do it okay taste I, it. we will do it <laughs> and you will find your way. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, uh, Francesco, very true. I, anyhow, because of Cesar, I mean, we're gonna meet soon here also. Um, I just shared um, a book that a friend made me know. Um, uh, actually, this friend is here. Um, and it's called The, the Practice of Dramaturgy. Uh, and ah, it's a book. okay. Uh, and um, and it's a book uh, that comes out more of uh, maybe people who actually work with dramaturgy in a theatrical sense, uh, but that then they um, somehow try to uh, you know take this the, the sense of dramaturgy uh, from uh, the theater to the 
to the outside, to the social space. Uh, and it's very conceptual. I mean, they're academics, but um, what they say uh, that is impressed in my mind um, is a bit also the um, uh, the origin of the word that uh, remains stuck in my mind, which is uh, drama, uh, which uh, means uh, somehow uh, I, don't, I, I don't mean that it's uh, also uh, the process. Uh, no, the um, in the process of working, and then uh, urgi that means the action. So they uh, starting from uh, the meaning of dramaturgy. They try to uh, think how um, how the process of the action that you do uh, uh, is uh, the initiator uh, of uh, a potential. Um, dramaturgical intervention and they come from theater so something uh, different from uh, Francesco who discovered these um, like uh, with other words uh, with the, the space uh, of uh, moving or walking or the artist that uh, Karen has referred to but yeah uh, I just wanted to share this book because I also found it very inspiring for for me in these terms yeah okay now I understand better the the question. <laughs> About... it's, it's, it's the same with the film too, you know, because and film is motion picture, so everything is moving. You know, there is even in dramaturgy, even in in the film, like something is moving. But the thing is how you know how how is uh, is is creating the process. But I think with the practice and with uh, with the experience, we will get no. Yeah. Now, um, unfortunately, Rabbi have um, the unfortunate task to send you walking, literally. Uh, we are going into two hours of uh, uh, cafe, and uh, I think we uh, earned our um, the honors to have walked, mind walked for more than an hour. Uh, the, um, the please feel free to continue the um, conversation. Uh, on the uh, comment um, section of the Walk Listen Create page, which is dedicated to this Walk Listen Cafe, to this conversation. So everybody that has registered can uh, continue the conversation by um, um, entering his uh, feedback and comments uh, on this uh, page where you have registered, and uh, we will be happy to answer. Uh, as well, um, we hope that uh, you will come back. Uh, ne the next uh, Walk Listen Cafe will be in two weeks, where we continue this conversation um, the, about walking and creative um, approaches, um, as we do every uh, two weeks. Uh, the walking, Walk Listen Create is the home of walking artists, so your, our hospitality, our doors are always open for you, so feel uh, free to drop in whenever you feel to and to browse, uh, to visit uh, our website and to um, uh, become part of it by uploading your work and your um, uh, events and your profile. Um, so um, for now, I would like to, to, to thank in the first place uh, Karen and Francesco um, for initiating this fire uh, and keeping it going on. Um, it, uh, and uh, to Enrico and Scrap to making this uh, go happen. Uh, and uh, to all of you uh, that have been here for the marvelous uh, and inspiring questions and remarks, uh, which will continue buzzing in our heads and minds uh, for some time. Uh, so, um, um, thank you. Enrico, you want to have a last word? Uh, yeah, I just uh, really want to thank you too, uh, what List and Create, um, uh, with whom I found uh, a lot of synergies and uh, also as an experience uh, and project uh, as a whole, as a platform about these topics. It uh, was really important for me to meet you. Um, and also, I'm very happy that today we were able to do this together. And I hope uh, we, there will be other occasions that uh, with SCAB or uh, the artists of SCAB or uh, that this um, 
meeting can be an initiator of um, some other stories. Um, and uh, I want also to thank a lot uh, Francesca Karen that uh, I'm very honored to have had the possibility to host together with work Beast and Create Garrett and Babak tonight. Uh, it was very uh, nice and uh, a very good uh, warming mind, uh, warming up of our minds for the residency now. So uh, thank you. <laughs>